Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life. Today I'd like to talk about binding. Binding is one of the most important steps in making a quilt. It is one of the last things we do, but it ensures that your quilt has a professional finish. This video will be a little bit longer than most of the ones I'm going to do. I originally thought about breaking this up into some shorter videos, but since it's all on one topic, I thought it might be best to have all of the information in one place. So this video will be a little bit longer. First of all, when you think about binding, you need to decide how wide you want to cut your binding strips. For large quilts, or for quilts that I want to have a wider frame around the edges, I cut my strips two and a half inches wide by width of fabric. For most of my quilts, though, I use a two and a quarter inch wide strip. And for many quilts, I will cut the binding a lot smaller and just cut a two inch wide strip of fabric. Now we'll start out by showing you how to join strips together and then we'll move into talking about how to attach the binding to your quilt. Okay. When you join strips of binding together, it's best to use a diagonal seam. You can press the seam open flat and create less bulk in your binding that way. For this example, I have two navy strips that I'm going to join together for a scrappy binding. You start by laying one strip face up on your table with the other strip at a perpendicular angle to it. Now to draw to sew the seam I like to draw a line first diagonally from the tip of the top strip to the bottom cor right hand corner of the bottom strip. So I'll use a ruler and I'll draw this diagonal line and then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew exactly just a thread's width toward the corner um, on the diagonal line. I've sewed the strips together now in a diagonal seam. What you want to do next is to trim off this extra part. I like to take my ruler, line it up on the sewn line, and just cut it off with the rotary cutter. Now I have two binding strips sewn together. These are just 10 inch sections because I'm doing a scrappy navy binding. But if you're using all one fabric, of course, your strips will be the width of the fabric. Next you'll want to take this over to the ironing board and you'll want to press this seam open so that it will lay flat and not cause a lot of bulk in your binding. Okay, I've pressed the seam open so that it's flat and it won't create a lot of bulk. The next thing you do is press your strip in half, lining up the raw edges to create your binding. Now here I have a scrappy binding strip that I worked on a little while ago. All of the strips are about 10 to 11 inches long. That seems to be a really good length if you're making a scrappy binding. Um, that way a lot of the fabrics will show on the edge of your quilt. And I like to keep these on hand and use leftover pieces of binding from other quilts to make my scrappy bindings. Um, as in this one, if you're just sewing them all together, you can just roll it up and have it ready to go. It's good to make your binding right at the beginning so that you can have it ready for your quilt when you're ready to bind it. Okay, we're moving on to the next step now and I'm going to show you how I attach my binding to the edges of my quilt. I've got a small table topper here to show you on and the first thing you're going to do, you'll have your binding ready and you'll have your quilt ready is you're going to start by sewing your binding to the quilt and you'll want to leave about this much extra binding just free. So you'll start sewing, leaving a little tail and I'll move over to the sewing machine now and show you how we do that next step. Okay, we're ready to start sewing. I've got my quilt trimmed and ready to go. I've got my binding I'm going to leave about this much free and I'm going to start sewing right about here. Use a quarter inch seam, back up your stitch right at the beginning, 
and then sew until you get just about one quarter of an inch away from your corner. Now when you get about a quarter of an inch away from the corner, you're going to want to stop sewing. If you're worried about getting the exact measurement right, you can. it helps to use a pin to mark it. Once you've stopped and backstitched one quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt, remove your quilt and binding from the machine. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pull that binding up and you are going, you will have a diagonal line right here. You're going to pull it up and then you're going to fold it down even with the edge of the quilt top. This is going to help you have a nice mitered corner on your binding. So again, we've stopped sewing one quarter inch from the edge. So we've got that quarter inch space right there. We're going to line up the raw edges of the binding with the right side of the quilt, pull it straight, and then fold it back down on itself. Again, lining up the raw edges of the binding with the edge of the quilt. Now we're going to start sewing again. We're going to actually start right at the top and sew our quarter inch seam all the way down, again stopping one quarter inch before we get to the edge of the quilt. I like to backstitch here as well. Okay, I'm a quarter of an inch away from that second corner and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to backstitch and remove my quilt and binding from the machine. I'm just going to show you this one more time, but this is what you'll do on each corner. And I'm glad I actually went a little too far this time. This is a great uh, um, way to show you what to do if you happen to stitch too far. You can just unsnip that last little seam, little stitch, um, so you still have your quarter of an inch without having sewn. Um, same thing, fold it up and fold it back down. And now we're going to continue on around the other uh, remaining two corners of the quilt and then I'll show you what to do when you get to the end.